All right, people. So I am back now. I just reviewed the Kelly Rowland's album, um, "Talk a Good Game." Now I'm going to be talking about two rap albums that are battling head to head this time around, and I'm talking about Kanye West Jesus and J Cole's "Born Sinner." Now I'm gonna start off with who I'm gonna start off with now. I'm gonna start off with J Cole, "Born Sinner." Now I bought the I bought the regular album, but I downloaded the regular um the deluxe edition off of um. Okay, I'm not going to front. I didn't download the off of iTunes, but I did download the five joints I was supposed to be yours truly part three mixtape or EP, whatever you want to call it. So I downloaded those five extra songs, but I did buy the regular edition though. So you know, don't hold that against me. But um, <laughs> so I bought this album, and um, it's this is a great body of work. I'm telling y'all, like J Cole really did his thing on this album. He just that transformation from you know the mixtapes to the last to his first album his last album Cold World Silent Story to this album you could definitely say a transition you could definitely say growth in his work and um even just with he was mentioning this in um, a few interviews um recently like when the last album came out he was kind of pressured to release a, a hit single or, or a radio single per se to come out before the album could get a release date because of the fact that who that 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 was my joint. I actually like who that that was my joint, but it didn't work. It wasn't a hit. And then uh, he came out with workout. I remember too when the workout first came out because I put it on the old version of doc, the doc report. And I remember I was just thinking, what's it? huh? But I liked it though because I liked the Kanye sample. I liked the sample of um, workout plan from Kanye. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get us a joint. Uh, you know, it shot. It was cool, but it still wasn't like the J Cole we kind of knew of. But it was still, it was still, still a cool attempt. And then, he, then he came out the other joint with Trey Songz. Um, can't get enough. I was like, I, I and it took me a while to appreciate that song too. And and you all can see too, both of the songs took a while to really catch on, and grab on to, but that eventually became hits though. Um, like workout especially because even top forty radio was playing it. Pop radio was playing that song, so you can tell that it took a while to leech on to it. Even after the album came out, it took a while, but still, the album opened with good numbers, like over two hundred and some thousand copies its first week, which was good for a debut rap album, and especially because it wasn't like like I said, he didn't have no radio singles at that time for real. For real. So for the album to debut that big, it kind of Pave this lane for artists to and record labels to look at artists and be like, okay, we can come up, we can come out with your album, but it doesn't have to necessarily have a radio single or a hit single. Just as long as you have a following, just as long as we know we have a good promo game going on, we can do something. So you know, Kendrick Lamar, you know, Swimming Pools was a decent sized hit before it came, you know, before his album Good um, Kid Mad City came out. But still, at the same time, it wasn't. A pop and sing like it became. It wasn't, you know, on top forty radio or rhythmic even rhythmic radio wasn't really playing. It was just really an urban based. Even urban wasn't really messing with it like that. But even after the album came out, it eventually did you know did real good on the charts, went top twenty on the Billboard Hot One Hundred. And also, um the album is almost like platinum. It's almost a million sold. Like I can predict like in the next probably three weeks counting the sales that's been going at or next three three to four weeks, it's gonna hit that million mark. So that's good. So clap clap bravo Kendrick Lamar. Um but going back to J. Cole's album, it starts off with the joint Illuminati, which samples juicy, uh you hear Biggie in the background a little bit and R. Kelly's I Wish, um that remix he came over the y'all know R. Kelly was going his Chicago stuff back then. Um but the Illuminati if everybody, I'm going to, you know, might as well join the Illuminati too. I, that's what I've been saying. I've been saying too. Train was up. Let's let's go. You know, but uh, shout out to the Illuminati. Praise you over Kanye. But um, <laughs> the Illuminati, that's my drink on the album. Then you have um, the the Kearney Sermon, which I used to do that on FNL Radio. I don't know if y'all used to listen to FNL Radio or not. But y'all know I used to have my little church, my what well, I call it, church segments where I used to be the pastor on the show and everything like that and you said the organ playing in the background so that kind of reminded me of that and then also on Land of the Snakes Power Trip which ended up becoming a big hit for J. Cole this time around without even having to 
in a sense, having to pressure himself into having a radio hit or being having a hit single at all. Power Trio just took off on its own. So that's a good look, too, um, with Miguel. And then you have the Mo Money interlude. Um, Trouble is my joint, too. Um, she knows from Amber Kaufman from one of my favorite groups, Dirty Projectors. Y'all got to check them out if y'all know about them. But she's barely on the song. She has like a Britney Spears, Will I Am kind of feel to the song where she's just basically singing like two notes and that's it. And you can hear her doing her little thing in the background. But other than that, it's a good joint though. Um, he got um, Forbidden Fruit with Kendra Lamar. I like the sample from A Tribe Called Quest on that joint. I, that's my that's my joint. I, I, I think that should be like the next single after Crooked Smile. Um, Ain't That Some Shit is my joint. Um... Science did a good job on that one, aka Reggie Perry. You know, we both share the same name, basically. So that's why I know about Science. But Science is one of those good producers that I haven't heard from him in a while too. So it's good to hear him on this joint. But ain't that should should be a, a full song? That's like one of those teaser songs, like Rihanna came out with Birthday Cake, that just ended up being like an interlude. Ain't that some shit should be like a full song for real, for real. Crooked Smile with TLC. I've been blessed. I've been playing that joint ever since it came out. Like that's my favorite joint. I put on the doc report and I even said. That was my favorite joint from the um that he released. It ha- gives you that Kanye college dropout kind of feel to it. it kind of gives you that feel good spirit and having TLC on it as well. You know they they're the queens of doing T Balls and Chili doing the uplifting songs like Unpretty um, and um even Damage um from off their 3D album. So they always had those kind of message songs. So it was good to hear them sing on the song and J Cole's working on their some songs for their new album as well. So that's a good look to tie everything in. Let Nas Down, another favorite joint of mine. Um, basically, in that song, he's talking about how Nas heard workout. You know, Nas, he heard that Nas was a big fan of his, but then when he heard that Nas heard workout, heard, and Nas said that he wasn't fucking with the song, it kind of hurt J. Cole's feelings. So he had to kind of prove himself again like, look, Nas is one of the greats, and I let him down. So how can I recover from that? So that's what Let Nas Down is all about. And Born Center featuring James Fontleroy. Um, a good closure for the album as well. So J. Cole's album is good as a whole. It reminds me, especially like the latter end of the album, like where um like towards where Fort Ben Fruit and Chain Chain and Day and everything is uh and Crooked Smile. It reminds me of a Kanye West late registration kind of album. It gives me that vibe, so I definitely appreciate J. Cole's more sinister. I picked that one up too. Now moving on to the the most talked about album right now, Kanye West Jesus. Yes, people actually bought this album. Now, I have every Kanye album, so that's why I felt... You know how some people, sometimes you buy, you know, you buy somebody's album from the start, from the very beginning, all the way up, and you feel kind of pressured to buy all of their discography? So I kind of felt pressure, pressured to buy this album, even though I didn't want to, because a blank disc, there's nothing on the inside, people. I was even in the store, like, okay, this piece, this is orange piece of duct tape. Is there like a little message behind it or something? Can I get like a secret code or like a gotcha right here or something like that? Or at least say Jesus right here. Kanye, I bought the album. Can you at least mark Jesus on the piece of tape right here? Yeah, I even scratched like the edge right here. You can see I scratched the edge right here trying to see if there was something behind it. But this is just it. Other than the little sticky credits on the back. But there's no album artwork. But Kanye said he wanted the album to speak for itself. And after listening to it, I, I agree with Kanye's crazy ass. I'm still praying for Kim Kardashian. I still want to get my prayer oil for her and for that little child Northwest. But, um, I'm not going to talk about nobody's children in this video. I'm not going to talk about nobody's kids and their names. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, Jesus starts off with the joint on the site. He worked with Daft Punk on the album on a couple of songs. He worked with Lupe Fiasco on, um, Black Skin Head. Um, Frank Ocean is on, um, on New Slaves, he has um, King L on um, Guilt Trip. He has um, Charlie Wilson. Like a nowadays, a Kanye album is a Kanye album without having Charlie Wilson on the CD on the track. So he got Charlie Wilson up there. Chief Keef is on the album too. Rick Rubin co-produced the. Uh, I mean, not co-produced, but he is actually produced the album with Kanye. So if y'all don't know about Rick Rubin, he's like. A god in the music industry because he and Russell Simmons both came up with Def Jam, Rep- Def Jam Records. Excuse me. So he, you know, he's like a one of the geniuses basically. And 
with um with this album I was like I, I was I was kind of thrown off by some of the screams and stuff like that and some of the stuff that Kanye was going through on the album. Um that's why I'm fearing for Kim Kardashian. Um it is what it is though. He is the song I Am God uh, I Am a God, which was supposed to be the name of the album basically. He has God featured on the song. So I was listening to see if I can hear God. I was like, God, are you there? I didn't hear God, but um it is what it is. And Chief Keith is on the joint um what we'll joint Chief Keep on again? Let me go back to my list real quick. When Chief Keep is on the joint, hold my liquor. Now, Chief Keep, y'all remember Amber Franklin, right? Or Amber, whatever her the hell. The teen mom that's having the backdoor porn video now. She can but she tried to come out with a little career album, like her own album that's all the tunes of shits. But oh, Chief Keep kind of reminded me of that. And that's why I laughed when I heard Chief Keep on the song because I don't know if I'm supposed to take it serious or not, but it is what it is. Um, King L on um, Send It Up, which is not a good bop to on the album. Um, Down 2 is a good joint um, with Charlie Wilson. Charlie Wilson just, that, you know, that last song, Down 2, really reminds me of, like, the Kanye late registration or a, um, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy put together with College Dropout. It reminds me of all his albums combined together, mashed into that one song because of the sample and because of just that vibe of it. And Charlie Wilson just brightens it with Uncle Charlie Wilson. You know, kind of Kanye. Charlie Wilson should get Kanye ways Kanye to just produce a whole album for him because, I mean, come on now. We all can associate Charlie Wilson with Kanye now, basically. Uh, Charlie Wilson, I mean, you know, a Kanye album is, like I said, a Kanye album isn't a Kanye album without Charlie Wilson nowadays. So, um, I was listening to the album, I was like, you know what, like I said, I was thrown off by the screams a little bit, but then after further listening and everything like that, I was just like, what kind of Illuminati pop is this album, especially, um, what's my joint in the album real quick, I'm in it, is my joint right there, um, Blood on the Leaves, I'm like, this is some Illuminati pop right here, like, this is some triangle Stuff that I'm, I'm digging, you know. I, I'm a part of the. Mem- I'm a member now. It is what it is. But um, Kanye's album "Jesus Is in Stores" expected to debut at number one, of course. J. Cool's following behind at number two, and um, Kelly. Uh, it is what it is. But um, Kanye West's album was definitely good. Um, I'm still, I'm, I'm still just thrown off by this whole clear case shit right here. That like a mixtape for five dollars at on Canal Street. But hey, it's about the music. That's what it's about. So, you know, it's a good album. So y'all definitely pick it up and make sure y'all check it out. And um So those are my three albums that y'all should check out this week. Um who I got? Kelly Rollins Talk a Good Game, J. Cole's Born Center, and Kanye West Jesus. Next week, um, Wale's The Gifted comes out on the twenty fifth. So y'all check that out uh, check that out as well. But um, that album was really good too. I listened to that album. And it's actually good. And um, I actually like that album a lot better than Ambition. So that's saying a lot. So y'all check those out, and um, I'm check it out later. So y'all visit the docreport.blog.com for some more information, more music and entertainment news. You know, always got the exclusives for y'all as well. So y'all keep it here, peace.